Hi, everyone, and welcome. It is February 9th. It is Wednesday, and it's time for the Topher Spin Knowledge Bolide Hangout. Tonight, we're, we're going to be discussing irons. We have a bunch of irons to discuss. We're only um, talking about three main classifications of them, though. So stay tuned for Meteorite 101 for a deep dive into the science behind iron meteorites. We just got back from Tucson, and I, I have to tell you guys, uh, just from a, a market report of pricing, if you have Mars and Lunar, hold on to it. <laughs> <laughs> There is not a whole lot of uh, lunar and Martian material uh, available. That's something to know. If you have Chelyabinsk and if you have lunar and Mars, you know, your, your investments are paying off. <laughs> how, how was your shopping in Tucson this year? Well, my shopping in Tucson um, was uh, mixed, I think, to say the best, uh, in, in terms of uh, unclassified NWABAs. I, I more than made up for it in other things. In general, there weren't that many uh, NWAs for sale, a lot fewer to look through, and our favorite uh, dealer, Muhammad Ismali, uh, was not there. So I had to resort to bribery of my fellow uh, Meteorite Mansion occupants, and I did score a couple of quite nice rocks. Um, Ron, you were, you were in Tucson. What's, uh, what's your little recap or opinion? Okay, um, I, I was able to find some NWAs. Um, but oddly enough, I found most of them away from the days in. Um, uh, but I, I did notice that prices this year are up significantly, especially for irons. I did, I did get a, a large NWA uh, sphere um, over at the, at the Ramada. The, there were a few iron slices that I bought. I, I actually bought a lot of iron slices, but they're all about this big. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah, I, I can find small of them. I'm, I, I like big things. I yeah, had to uh, talk to uh, Dima and Serga from the, the Real Comet Shop, and um, they have remarked that there is just really very, very little more coming out, and what stuff is coming out is stuff that was in a very low, swampy area that's uh, quite corroded. So it's, you know, it's supply and demand, and there's not much new supply, and there's still plenty of demand. And I'm going to introduce a new segment on the Knowledge Bolide. And this is something that I never thought I would say about Sue. She reads the Met Bowl. And she, like, loves gathering information and facts from the Met Bowl. Just going to review the uh, meteorites that were approved and published in January of 2022. Um, so we had uh, 59 meteorites altogether. Uh, we had uh, nine named and uh, 50 NWAs. And of all those 59, there was one fall. And the two in South America are actually the only ones that were uh, not new this time. They've just been revised. It fell in January of last year. Nobody found it. A bunch of meteorite hunters went out looking for it. And then uh, later in May, two workers uh, happened to cross two, um, two of the stones and they were shiny fresh black fusion crust on them. So this one uh, was in a museum. It was not until 2015 that a scientist was there looking at them and said, these are two different classifications, but they're being presented as the same meteorite. So important to donate pieces of your meteorite to science because sometimes 80 years later, they are, they'll find new things. This is 168 grams of miles, a silicated iron. This is the polished side and you can even see the crystal grains in the metal on this side. But the edge side is absolutely fantastic. This is a Mount Dueling 27 kilogram Whoa. Showstopper. I oh, yeah. Oh. This is 100% not oh. a cutter. This is a Gebel Chamel. It's an iron ungrouped. Yeah, just a, a beautiful meteorite that, that shows shrapnel and all kinds of cool stuff in it. But yeah, it's one of my favorite meteorites. It's uh, very stable. Uh, if you zoom in, it, it, it has, a, it has a, an altered uh, crystal structure. Yeah, Gyriat, this is a 55 gram one. Uh, this one I, I obtained just uh, three years ago in, in Tucson. Uh, this came out, uh, it's a medium octahedrite, it's 2D classification. So yeah, there are a lot of different uh, iron types. Uh, there's uh, 13 total groupings. 
uh, plus young groups. So we're covering only uh, five of them tonight. Uh, and those groups were based on uh, what type of structure they had. Uh, so I got them listed down here. You had the hexahedrites, the octahedrites, and the ataxites. Um, so hexahedrites are, are very low in nickel content, so you won't get a with matinstein pattern. So those are all the breakdowns there, and basically they're telling you the width of the bands in the pattern. What, uh, what we changed over to is that tells you the structure, but it doesn't tell you where they're from. And the majority of all of our classifications now, the whole point is to try to say, these are all from a, a, a like parent body. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, what they started doing was they started looking at the trace elements inside of the iron meteorites. Uh, and you can see down on the bottom, you have a uh, whole nickel content in the meteorite. And then because it's, you're talking trace elements, so you're talking really tiny amounts, parts per billion, parts mm -hmm. per million. But yeah, you see there's only 11 uh, regular C, uh, 1Cs and two anomalous. There's, there's a lot of 2ABs uh, that, mm -hmm. in this grouping here. Uh, the 2Cs are pretty much like the rarest of, of the irons. Because I have something that most of us don't normally see. Whoa. Whoa. So this is a little over 500 grams of Agadol. Wow. Agadol? Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. I, didn't know it, I didn't know it could look like that. This is a, a Campo, and this is about 400 grams, and it's been sliced and etched. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Nice finish. Ooh. I love that etching. Beautiful. This is one that's a little bit unique because you don't see oh, sliced yeah. Sukkot tailwind yeah. very often. No. Yeah. So this is 129.4 grams. It's a wow. fairly thick wow. slice, it is. but it's oh, sliced yeah. and etched. So this is Lake Murray. So this is a 2AB. Uh, this oh. one has a nice little Troy light inclusion in there. Lake Murray is really cool because it is probably the oldest unterrestrialized uh, iron meteorite on the planet. Next one I had was this. Uh, this is a 2D. This is nothing. Um, so this was found <laughs> nice, by gold... from Arizona. <laughs> yep, this was found by a gold prospector um, back in 2010. And then mm -hmm. my final piece I wanted to show off tonight was my Kumarina. That's that 2C iron mm -hmm. class. That's uh, one of eight. Mm -hmm. uh, and Kumarina is a, actually a pretty old meteorite. It was found in 1909 in Australia. Also, gold prospecting. This is a cool little slice, and it's got uh, got a little bit of the natural edge on it. So very nice. Just uh, if this was originally discovered, no wonder why they thought it was just an iron. Um, this one I just picked up in Tucson, and I'm going to have this one reconditioned, and it's going to be absolutely stunning when when we're done. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Thanks a lot for joining us. Next week we're doing carbonaceous part two been really popular so stay tuned for that yep. so thanks everyone we'll see you next week bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. bye. bye.